For the first two seconds, uh, we're talking about the speeder here. They have a speed of 25 meters per second, so V equals 25 M per S. And uh, it's from zero to two seconds, so delta T would be 2.0 seconds. And we're asked to find the distance, D equals question mark. Um, so this is a speed distance time question. The formula is speed equals distance over time. Isolate this for distance. That'll become D equals uh, V times delta T. That's multiplying both sides by delta T. I can substitute the values. So 25 times 2.0, giving me 50. Uh, the units would be meters because um, speeds in meters per second, time is in seconds. That's going to result in the distance being in meters. Sig figs should be two sig figs. All right, so essentially this is like the head start that the speeder has on the cop because it takes two seconds before the cop um, gets their car going. So within that two second time, the speeder has been able to go 50 meters. Well now, part B, um, the cruiser is going to give chase now. So for the cruiser, we'll have uh, the acceleration of 10.0 meters per second squared. Let me highlight some of these things here. Um, starting from rest, so um, V1 equals zero. And the question is, uh, when will the cruiser catch up to the speeder? Okay, at what time will the cruiser catch up to the speeder? So, um, it's kind of a classic question here and there's various ways to do it. The way I'm going to do it is try to set up an expression for the position of the speeder and set up another expression for the position of the cruiser and then set them equal to each other. Yeah, that is my plan. So um, the speeder, so going back to the speeder. Now this person has a 50 meter head start, remember. So their position, which I'm gonna denote as D, uh, their position at any given time is going to be that 50 meters initially uh, plus twenty five delta t. So that twenty five stands for the speed, twenty five meters per second, multiplied by the delta t, uh, which is uh, the number of seconds uh, that are going to pass here before the cruiser passes the speeder. So I better write that down. I may have said that wrong. Delta T represents the time elapsed since the cruiser uh, starts accelerating. Since the cruiser starts accelerating. So for example, if, uh, if one second passes since the cruiser starts accelerating, then the speeder would be at a position of 50 plus 25 times one. Uh, that equals to 75 meters. And if two seconds passes since the cruiser starts accelerating, then the speeder would have now gone a total of 50 plus 25 times two, uh, which would be 100 meters. So this delta T I'm using in part B of the question, it represents the time elapsed since the cruiser started accelerating. 
Um, now I'm going to try the same thing um, for the cruiser. Uh, there is one of the kinematics equations, which goes displacement equals V1 delta T plus half acceleration delta T squared. Um, so that's the equation that's going to apply here. And V1 equals to zero. So V1 times delta T, zero times anything, will be zero. This whole term goes away. This expression simplifies to uh, displacement equals half the acceleration times delta T squared. When I fill in the value of 10 uh, for the acceleration, that gives me a half times 10 times delta T squared, uh, and 1 half times 10 is 5. Now I'm going to write 5.00 so that it has three significant digits because 10.0 has three significant digits. All right, so what I've done is I've come up with two expressions. One gives the, the position of the speeder, and one gives the position of the cruiser. And what I want to do is find out when these two positions are equal to each other, because that's when the cruiser uh, catches up to it. So. Um, what I end up doing is I set these equations equal to each other. So let me just number them. 1 and 2. And I'm going to say set equation 1 equal to equation 2. Uh, because both equations give me D, a position, and I want the positions to be equal. So I set them equal to each other. So that's going to result in uh, this overall equation of 50 plus 25 delta t equals 5 delta t squared. So this is like uh, solving a system of two equations and two unknowns uh, using the substitution method. Okay, so this results in a quadratic equation. I don't know if you uh, recognize that, but um, I've got a quadratic equation here with a t squared term, a t term, and a constant term. So I need to solve this quadratic. What I'll do is um, subtract 25t on both sides and also subtract 50 on both sides so that the left side ends up being 0. That's kind of how you approach solving a quadratic equation. Um, all of these coefficients are perfect multiples of 5, so I'm just going to divide everything by 5, divide both sides by 5. So 0 divided by 5 is, stays as 0. Uh, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I'm just, I'll just write it t squared, 1t squared. Uh, 25 divided by 5 is 5. And 50 divided by 5 is 10. Oops. All right. And then um, I solve that quadratic. Now I'm, I'm thinking this does not factor. Um, yeah, it does not factor nicely, so what I'll do is I'll use the quadratic formula. So uh, here's the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Give myself some more room here. Okay, so uh, just substitute the coefficients in. So negative b would be negative of negative 5.0, so that makes positive 5.0. Uh, 
plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared, so that's 5.0 squared. Uh, I didn't write the negative because a negative squared is a positive anyway. Save myself a little bit of time there. Uh, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times 1 times negative 10 all over 2a, 2 times 1. Um, so that 1, um, it's actually 1.00. I was a little lazy uh, when I went um, one of the steps, that the 5.00 divided by 5. Uh, it should really be 1.00 and have three sig figs. So I'm just going to keep track of that mentally. All right, so, I mean, I can calculate this out. I'll simplify a little bit. I'll simplify under the radical. So that'll be uh, 65. And... Um, so I'll get two answers here. One of them is going to be a negative answer, like 5 minus the square root of 65 is going to be some negative answer, which is not going to apply in this situation because um, I'm not looking for a negative time here. So I'm only going to take the positive uh, value. So the negative is going to be, uh, we say it's inadmissible. So I'll try to get that in the calculator then. Okay, so I'm coming up with 6.3 after I round it to two significant figures. 6.5 that is. Seconds. All right, so um, delta t equals 6.5 seconds. So to actually answer question B, um, I got to go back and remember that 6.5 is actually um, how much time since the cruiser started accelerating but the cruiser started accelerating two seconds after the, the speeder passed it. So uh, the overall time, the time that the cruiser catches up to the speeder would actually be 8.5 seconds, uh, just adding the two. So this one's tricky in terms of you have to um, Keep track of what t represents and what delta t represents in each stage of your solution.